crisis at the border just got that much worse, and the Biden administration really doesn't seem to know what to do about it. Let's bring in Representative Ralph Norman, who keeps an eye on our border security, unlike anyone else there in Congress. Congressman Norman, thanks for joining us, sir. Yeah, glad to be with you, Larry. I, I do want to get to the point, but real quickly, obviously, the collapse of the Silicon Valley Bank is front of mind for everyone. We just had E.J. Antoni on from Heritage Foundation to sort of lay out how we got here. But now what about the government's response? You saw the president's remarks earlier today. Uh, he's going to take care of anyone whose money was in the bank, even if they weren't insured, but he's not calling it a bailout. Sir, how is this not a bailout? Well, it, it is a bailout. And look at the precedent it sets. You know, you typically have, banks have a $250,000 limit on savings deposits that are covered uh, with insurance. And to bail everybody out with money from the federal government that they don't have is is just a, another uh, indication. This, this administration is clueless. Yeah. And, and their response, I mean, it, this just happened. Uh, and their response to do this is unfathomable. Well, and Congressman, he said that, you know, no tax dollars will be going to take care of these, to cover these deposits. It's just it's going to come from the fees paid to the FDIC, to the insurance fund. But where does the president think those fees come from? That's we, the consumers, we pay those fees. I don't think he understands that. It, everything comes from the taxpayers at the end of the day. And the fees aren't going to cover this. And look at the precedent that this sets for other banks. And, you know, it's caused by this administration. I mean, the printing of money, the inflation, uh, everything's just in flux. And the banks, uh, I'm sure as we look at, as we go down the road and find out the real root cause of uh, Silicon Valley collapse, yeah. uh, then we'll see, you know, how they're going to handle it from here on out as far as the federal government. But it's totally irresponsible him one to say wonders, this. One wonders, sir, if this was a bank that catered to farmers and the agricultural community in a valley that wasn't populated with big money donors from high tech to the Democratic Party, if maybe they hadn't been Johnny on the spot with this response within 24 hours. From what I understand, they, the loan demand was weak. They took uh, money and put it in uh, fixed assets that g gave them a better yield, higher interest paying. Uh, they they have over the last two to three years had really jumped up in asset value. They were over I think 220 billion dollars, and over the last couple of years they've just jumped. And when you when some when a bank grows that quick, you have to look behind the yeah. Uh, the, and find out why it's just grown so quick. But it's come, come back to bite them. To that end, Congressman, you're on the Financial Services Committee. You say this has happened in the last couple of years. That's been under the Biden administration. But there is some talk about uh, certain regulations that were rolled back during the Trump administration. Uh, are, are there enough regulations now in place to have oversight for something like this to prevent it from happening? And if so, where were the regulators? Well, I think, you know, the, the regulators can't look at everything. And the dollars that, that they would put in fixed assets, uh, as an example, were it was a business decision. And you have to look at why they did it. But again, they didn't have much loan growth, from my understanding. Mm. And the regulators, I mean, how do you, how do you anticipate that? Uh, with, but with the economy where it is, and with so many businesses under strain from every different source to pay loans back, uh, is straining every American and every business that I talk to. And the bank is the first to feel it. And I think, to be honest, is probably, uh, we're going to have to look at more of it and see what um, what other banks may be affected. Hopefully, yeah. uh, they can get to the bottom of this one. But bad decisions are bad decisions at the banking level. All right. Uh, thank you for that, sir. I'd love to shift our focus now to the crisis, the next crisis in the Biden administration. This one completely man-made as well, the border. Here's video we saw uh, uh, captured by Bill Malusian over at Fox News or from his sources. Let's take a look at this. This is at the Rio Grande crossing. Felice Viaje, yeah, it, happy travels uh, for sure. Uh, this looks like it was coordinated, it was planned. They said, okay, at this moment, we're all going to storm. You saw them, they all had their cameras going. We're going to storm the border. This is what President Biden and his spokespeople and Secretary America say is a secure border, Congressman. Yeah, and Larry, I mean, if you look at the just the numbers, uh, total under this administration is over 
4.6 million. I think that's low. Uh, the 23 borders and counters so far are a million. But unless you have a controlled entry point, uh, unless you have a wall that you have a, regulation, a regulated system to process people, it's just a, what we saw was a, uh, a run on, that's one particular area that there's a run on. What about the ones they missed that get across? And the damage that it's doing to this country, the financial burden it's putting on cities, as an example, New York, which is uh, already complaining about the, uh, the the fact their administration, their uh, municipality is underwater. Uh, it's just unheard of. And for Mayor Orcas to claim that this is secure, what's unsecure? Let him explain that. Well, now, that's why so many I would in favor of impeaching him and. I don't know, know if you can get any worse than somebody that just completely misrepresents the truth. Well, that brings us to Corinne Jean-Pierre. She's the spokesperson for the administration. Over the weekend, she said that uh, they're trying to clean up and fix a immigration system that had been gutted and neglected by the Trump administration. Do you know what she means by that? Because last I checked, we, we didn't have we, maybe 10 or 20,000 illegal crossings, not to the tune of 200,000 as we have. And we also had the remain in Mexico policy for anyone claiming asylum. Uh, it seemed a lot more orderly under the Trump administration, Congressman. Yeah, and they know that, Larry. It's just, it's just words. And for her to claim that the, that the Trump administration that there's not a difference now than when the Trump administration was in charge two and a half years ago is, is again, insane. Uh, Title 42 was in place. He was building the wall. It was going to be an orderly uh, process for anybody wanting to come into America. Now, it's just uh, it's a free-for-all. Yeah. And think of the damage uh, that it's doing to our cities. Look at the drug cartels that uh, I saw a, a uh, a picture the other day, how they're set up in this country. The cartels are running Mexico. It's going to take the military probably at some point to, to get our country under control with them and to uh, disband them uh, on the border. But uh, her words mean nothing as the Biden administration don't. They don't intend to do anything about it. And I expect we're going to have, before this is over, with 10 to 15 million illegals in this country. We're about two months away from Title 42 being lifted for good, it appears, uh, although we'll see if that can be extended once again, Congressman. And now we hear the Biden administration floating the idea of family detention centers at the border, which I was told was evil under the Trump administration. Uh, they claim, oh, well, we're considering it, but it'll be done in a very humane way. Do you know what they mean by that? Uh, again, I, as far as I knew, the detention centers served their purpose, and actually it was uh, quite a humane situation. Well, it was, it was a humane situation. They politicized it to say children were being separated and from the parents. And I know when I was down there, they had uh, had detention centers in buildings. And uh, typically, a, one det detention center will hold 1,500 people, uh, could go up to 2,500. But, you know, Larry, all this has got to be enforced, uh, even if you build the detention facilities. Uh, you've got to have a way of knowing who's coming in and, and to put them up. Look at the dollars that are going to this. Look at the getaways that we'll never even know where they are, and they don't even, uh, they're not candidates to go in uh, detention facilities because they're getting across the border unfettered. So it's just the intention is not there, and the motive is just let everybody in in this country, which is uh, unfair to the taxpayers, and it's uh, unfair to those who got in legally. Quick, we only have about 30 seconds, but many people are waiting and anticipating Secretary Mayorkas uh, under oath in front of your committee. Uh, do you know when that's going to happen? Uh, he's been on the top of the list for a long time since we took control. I know they're uh, issuing uh, a lot of subpoenas, and he's the first to go because of the damage that's front and center stage that we're seeing now. So I would guess within the next couple of weeks he'll be called up and uh, couldn't come quick enough. Yeah. Agreed. Um, we're looking forward to that. Congressman Ralph Norman, South Carolina, doing uh, double duty for us on um, bank collapse and the border collapse. Hopefully next time we have you on, it won't be about some collapse, but, you know, with this guy in the White House. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. There's more to come. Keep it here. You're watching O'Connor Tonight on Salem News Channel.